So we're going to take a look at uh, the topic of beyond the unit circle. So we've defined the sine and the cosine of an angle theta with respect to our unit circle, which you see the smaller circle of these concentric unit circles, or excuse me, concentric circles, right? Two circles with the same sign. All right, now we want to kind of move beyond that and look at points that don't necessarily lie on the unit circle. Can we still use the cosine and the sine? And if so, how would that work? All right, so previously, here was our definition that we had, some point here, P, which again, you know, just to not crowd for my drawings that I'm going to have later. P, the x coordinate we defined was cosine of theta, sine of theta. All right, and these were essentially the, we have the hypotenuse of this triangle, which was one of this right triangle by dropping this diagonal here. And the length here uh, along the vertical is the sine theta. And the, along the horizontal was the cosine theta. All right, now, <clears throat> what if that point didn't lie on this unit circle, but instead lied on some other circle? All right. I'll call this point Q. All right, and this has coordinates x, y. Can I write these in terms of sine theta, cosine theta? All right. Or sine of a function, sine theta, cosine theta of some angle, right? In this case, this angle theta. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do the same thing here. Let's drop a vertical, a perpendicular down here, All right? And we have another triangle, right? I'm going to call this point S. All right, so we have some points of interest labeled here, P, Q, uh, o for the origin here, and then just some point X, S, excuse me. All right, and here we're going to label this distance R, okay, from the origin to this point Q. All right, so our circle is some circle of radius R, All right, where R is just some fixed value. Okay, now we're going to use... Uh, Triangle similarity here, All right? So they're not equal. We could see clearly that uh, these are two different size triangles, but they are similar, right? This small triangle here, right, which I'll call triangle OP. Oh, let me label this point here as well. Triangle OPR, right? And this is the similarity symbol, right? Not equal, this notion of similarity to this larger triangle, OQS. All right, now when two triangles are similar, that means that they're, the ratio of their corresponding sides are equal. So what I mean by that is, let's take a look at, uh, for this smaller triangle here, let's look at the vertical. This is sine of theta, so that's the length of the side and the ratio of the corresponding side, that would be this side here, QS. All right, that would be equal with, let's take the hypotenuse. In this case, the hypotenuse of this is one. <clears throat> and the hypotenuse of the larger triangle is R. Right now, QS is this line segment, but QS is also has the value of Y, right? So I can rewrite this as sine theta over Y equals to 1 over R. All right now we have a proportion. And in solving my proportion by doing some cross multiplication, right, we get Y is equal to R sine of theta. Okay, so now I have a way to represent that point on that unit on that circle of radius r. Excuse me, not the unit circle, but the point on a circle of radius r in terms of sine. In this case, it has a factor of r sine of r multiplied by. All right now, in a similar way, doing the same reasoning, I can 
show that x is going to be equal to r cosine of theta. So now we have a way to represent that point Q, right, which we had out here, that is not on the unit circle, but some other circle of radius r in terms of cosine theta and sine theta. Okay, so we can extend the definition here of the sine function and the cosine function to points outside of the unit circle. So this brings us to here our theorem here. If Q, a point xy, is the point on the terminal side of an angle theta, plotted in standard position, which lies on the circle, x squared plus y squared equals to r squared, then x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. Moreover, cosine of theta is equal to x over r. Sine of theta is equal to y over r. Okay? And we see that illustrated in our drawing here. All right? Cosine of theta is now defined as this value here, x over r. Sine of theta is this value, y over r. All right, so let's, let's work through an example where we use some actual values here numbers that we're going to plug in. Okay, so for this example, let's see, suppose that the terminal side of an angle theta contains the point Q negative four negative two find sine theta, cosine theta. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off simply by just drawing the point. I always like to have a visual to go along with these problems, just so I know exactly what I'm looking for. So we have our x axes. Here's our y axes. So we have negative 4, 1, two, three, four, and negative two. All right, so that would be this point down here. Okay, so the angle theta that is being referred to here again always in standard position unless otherwise told that we're, it's not in standard position. Okay, so here we have that angle theta. And again, right, all comes down to our right triangle here. All right, has reference angle right here. But again, here what we need to find is the value of the hypotenuse here, right, which using Pythagorean theorem, r is the value of the x value squared, so negative 4 squared, plus the y value squared. So r is the square root of 16 plus 4, right? Both positive. And it gives me root 20. All right, now reducing or simplifying this radical, right? This becomes 20 is 5 times 4, where 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2, outside of the root. So we get 2 root 5. All right. All right, so now we found our r. And now we just simply apply the theorem by plugging in the formula into the formula. Cosine of theta 
is the x value, in this case negative 4, over r, which is 2 root 5. And for the sine of theta, we get negative 2 over 2 root 5. Now, uh, these fractions, let's reduce them so they're in lowest terms. Uh, negative 4 and 2 reduces to negative 2 over root 5. And negative 2 over 2 root 5 reduces to negative 1 over root 5. Okay. All right, now one thing to keep in mind here, just a couple of remarks here. What I see a lot of, um, especially when it's your first kind of uh, introduction to trigonometry, or maybe it's been a while, is I get a lot of uh, cosine equals to this. That does not make any sense. That is not proper, right? Cosine is a function that takes as an input an angle, in this case, theta. So you must write cosine of theta equals to this. Right? And again, we don't know what the angle theta is. And we're not asked to find it, and we're not going to find it at this moment, okay? We're simply asked to find the cosine of theta and the sine of theta, okay? So just keep that in mind. The angle, we will develop techniques later in the course to find the angle, but now it's not a question that we need to ask. We simply need to find the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. Okay. 